Hi, everyone. Good morning, guys. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's start. So we're done with uh, uh, Maven, right? Any doubts, guys, so far in Maven? No doubts. Okay, next we are going to start um, Jenkins. Okay. So here the section name is CI. CD, continuous integration and continuous deployment. Okay. So this is the section. So in this section, we have many tools in the market. That is the first one is Jenkins, Hudson, Team City, Circle CI, Travis CI, Go CI, like this. Uh, like this, uh, many tools we have in this section. Okay. Here we are going to deal with Jenkins. Okay, so mostly 90% of the market is going with Jenkins. CICD means Jenkins is very famous. Okay, so here we are going to learn Jenkins. So here, what is uh, CICD? Continuous integration and continuous deployment. Okay, this is the section name, guys. Okay, we will integrate with the developers. Okay, and we will get the changes. Okay, the same way for the deployment also. Continuously, we will deploy. If a small change in the code, okay, if a one line of code change, okay, uh, we will deploy. So we will fetch that changes immediately and we will deploy that code in the web servers and we'll check whether it is working or not. Okay, so not manually. Manually means it will take a lot of time. So here we will do automate. Okay. So first we need to understand um, before Jenkins, how it is. Okay. So... Let me show you this. So this is a developer. And this is QA, tester. OK. So what the developer will do? He will develop the code. We call it as a source code also. Anything is fine. Okay. So after developing the code, what he will do? He will send the code to the QAs for the test as he will send. Okay, here we are discussing about before Jenkins, guys. Okay, before Jenkins, what problems we have? And once the Jenkins involved into our DevOps uh, or into, into the market, so what changes it is uh, it is bringing here, okay? So that we are going to know here. So developer now, they're sending the code to the QAs. What QAs will do? The QAs will test the code, okay? They'll test the code. So the unit test and all these things they will do not. So while they're testing the code, see these the QAs, how they will test based upon the client requirement, they will test the code. Okay. So 
while they're testing the code, obviously they will get some culprits, errors they will get. Okay. So these errors, they, they don't know how to rectify those errors because they are not developers to rectify the errors. There are testers. Okay. So if it's small error also, like sometimes we get small, small errors like semicolon error, error um, spacing issues. Okay. So like that. That also, they are not aware of it. So simply they will give the report. If anything is not working, simply they'll give the report to the developer. Okay. Now what the developer will do? He will track the issue and he will rectify it. Okay. But here for the developers, the testers, they are not giving the proper information. Simply they're giving the report that it's not working. That's it. What happened in which line the problem is. Okay. All those detailed information they are not giving. Now the developers, they have to track, they have to trace it out where the error is. Okay, so for that, it, it take again some time. Okay, a lot of time it will take. And after, after tracing out, so they will rectify the error. Okay, for the rectification again, they'll take some time. Okay, so like this continuously from the developers to testers. This is the process actually. Okay, here they're wasting a lot of time. Not only one developer, right? And not only uh, 10 lines, 100 lines of code, right? So, 1000 lines of uh, data, lines of code will be there and hundreds of developers will be there. Okay, so they're wasting the time. Most of the, uh, mostly between these two departments only, they're wasting the time actually. Okay, so this is the main issue here. And if you see deployment wise also. Okay. So if you want to deploy the application, um, normally they, when they'll deploy the application after 30% or 50% of the application, um, okay. after completing of 50% of the application, they'll deploy the application and they'll check whether it is working or not. Okay. If it is working fine, well and good, no problem. If it is not working now, Again, it's uh, it's very difficult to uh, trace it out where, in which department the problem is. Okay. So, and they'll not give the deployment in the general time. I mean, general, suppose you having a general shift like morning nine to six. Okay. So they will give in the 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. Okay. So the odd times they will give you for the deployment. Okay. So deployment wise, we have a lot of issues here. So to overcome all these things, here the DevOps and the DevOps tools, inside the DevOps tool, we have a tool called Jenkins. Okay, here between these two departments, I'm going to involve here. Okay, so this is Jenkins. So Jenkins is under Double uh, DevOps tool only, right? Under DevOps only, right? So Jenkins. So now we are not uh, depending on the testers now on board. Okay. So you will get the code, everything from the developers to the DevOps team or Jenkins. Okay. Now, once we receive the code from the developers to uh, our team, Jenkins team and uh, DevOps team, okay, you can give us a DevOps also here. Okay, here what we will do? Here we have a tool called Maven. We already having a tool called Maven. So by using this tool, we are going to test the code. We're going to test the code. So once we test the code, we done already Maven last in the yesterday we finished it, right? So once we test the code, obviously you will get the errors and all those things. That report we will give to the developer. We are not taking much time to give the report to the developer, but QA will take a lot of time to give the report to the developer. But here we are not taking. Within 10 to 15 minutes, we will give the report to the developer. That too, clear information will be there which line, column number, error name, everything clearly we will mention in the report and we will give to the developers. 
Now it's very easy for the developers to identify the issue and rectification. Identification directly, we only give. We are only giving the line number and column number. No, it's very easy for them. Okay. So report, for the report, we are not taking much time. And, uh, uh, the, uh, and, 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 and the report also we are giving with a clear information. And coming to the deployment also. Okay, deployment, we'll see that next one. So like this, developers and the Java, Jenkins team. Okay, so here Maven, again Maven you will get in the Jenkins. Maven we will integrate with the Jenkins and we will test the code. Okay, so like this, finally, you will get the filtered code here. So finally, filtered code means uh, the packages. You are generating the packages here. Jar package, var package, like this. You are generating the packages here. So these packages, we are going to deploy These packages we are going to deploy in JFrog artifact. Artifactory will be there. This is storage place. Okay. So artifactory. So these packages we are going to deploy to this artifact. Okay. So this one also you will get uh, here. Artifactory is the section and the tool we use here, JFrog. This also we will get the Jenkins one. Okay. So this one you can draw like this. You can keep everything here in one place. Okay, the same thing I explained in the demo also. Okay, the same thing, but here uh, from the developers to testers, we will send again. Okay, in, in that way I explained in the demo, but that is not the exact way. Okay, overview I gave in the demo. Okay, so after generating the packages here, those packages we will deploy in the artifact. Okay, from this artifactory, we will send it to the testers. Why again testers means they have the other testings on log. Okay, unit test only we are doing here with the Maven. So they have the other testing like scenario tests, smoke tests, other tests will be there. That and all their headache, we are not bothering about other testings on log. Okay, so this is the process. Once the Jenkins involved here, the deployment wise also, continuously we will deploy. If a developer change a single line of code or a single character, okay, so we will fetch that data and we will deploy. Continuous deployment. That is also not manually automated. Here you can see, uh, let me open the Jenkins material. So this is the index that we are going to cover in the Jenkins. See, without Jenkins, the same thing I explained. So the benefits of CI-CD, immediate bug detection and the minimal workflow. See, actually default in the Jenkins initially, we have only continuous integration only. CD is not there. Later on, they added the CD also. First, initially CI only. The default is CI only will be there in Jenkins. Continuous integration. Now both are famous, CI and CD. And we can deploy at any point of time now. Okay, and we can record the build history for all the all the things. We can track and we can store the history. And the speed delivering. Okay, so all these things are possible now once the Jenkins involved here.
Okay. Here you can see the list of CICD tools again. See many are there. Many tools are there. Here, actually, the Hudson and Jenkins both are same. Hudson and Jenkins both are same. So, small story is there here behind this. Jenkins actually derived from the Hudson only. Jenkins derived from Hudson. Actually, this guy, Kosho Kawagaji, his, his name is uh, Kosho Kawagaji. Okay, it's, it's very difficult to pronounce actually. Okay, so this guy, he developed the Jenkins actually. This guy initially, he started developing a CA tool, continuous integration tool. Okay, basically he is a open source community developer. Okay, he he started he uh, he started working in the Eclipse, in the Eclipse organization. He 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 started working, and there he started the open source tool called continuous integration. And after a few years, the Sun Microsystems take over the Eclipse. Who is Sun Microsystems? Any idea? For which software they're famous? Sun Microsystems. It's a company name. Java. Okay. Sun Microsystems people only develop Java guys. Okay. So now Sun Microsystems people take over the Eclipse. Now this employee comes under the Sun Microsystems. Okay, now the Sun Microsystems, uh, see Oracle, Oracle take over the Sun Microsystem. Now the Java and the Sun Microsystems uh, belongs to Oracle. So now this employee comes under the Oracle. So this happened not in one day guys, in, in years, okay. So finally, actually he started long back, he started Okay, in the Eclipse only, he started uh, developing an open source uh, tool that is continuous integration. Okay, his aim is he want to release as a open source in the market, free of cost, he want to release in the market. But these people not agreed, Oracle people not agreed for this. So they, they, they go uh, in commercial, right? So they are not agreed. So that's why what he did now, he left the company. He left the company and he started a new organization called Jenkins. And the Oracle people, um, they gave the name as uh, Hudson. Same name you should not keep, no? So uh, they gave name as a Hudson and this guy, he launched a new product, okay, Jenkins. Both he only developed. This one he developed in the Oracle. So he, after leaving the company from the Oracle, he started a new uh, company with the name Jenkins. Both he only developed. So now Hudson is a licensed one. Jenkins is a open source one. Hudson only few people like uh, the permanent clients for the Oracle. Okay, so they are using the Hudson paid version under. Okay. But Jenkins is having a huge market, guys. 90% of the market is there for the Jenkins. Nowadays, the Circle CI also getting famous. Bamboo, Circle CI. All these things. So this is the story, actually. Okay. Why Jenkins? Okay, so we have many tools. No, why only Jenkins? It's a common question. So it's an open source tool, and it provides the effectively to provide the continuous integration and deployment. And Jenkins has thousands of plugins, which is used to connect to other tools also. Here, the main advantage of the Jenkins is you can connect with any tool. Here, you have thousands of plugins, guys. Nice. Plugins means in the Maven, we have the plugins, right? Same. The plugin meaning is same only, no change in that. But here in the Maven, we, uh, we are writing the syntax, okay, XML syntax we wrote and we are calling outside plugins into POM file. Like that, we will not do. 
here in the Jenkins, directly we will install the plugin, that's it. So whatever the plugins are required, those plugins we will install directly. We will not write any XML code and all those things. So here it's very simple. Initially, the Jenkins started with around uh, 150, 100 to 150 plugins. Now it's around 2,500 plugins are there with the Jenkins. Jenkins is a framework. What is a framework, guys? Any idea? Can anyone list one or two examples of framework technologies? No idea? Guys, at least yes or no. I didn't get any responses. No. Thank you. Okay. No. So, next one is here. So, the framework means, the best example is Java and .NET. Java, uh, Structs, Springs, okay? So, the those technologies comes under the framework technology. See, framework means with that, you can do anything. You can customize like anything. There is no limit. You can do anything with that. The same way uh, in the dot net you have the shisha. Okay, same. These two are the best examples. Okay, so here Jenkins also we treating it as a framework. So you can connect with any tool. Okay. Next, here we have the job schedules also. We can schedule the task. I mean, job means here one task only. Okay, here one task only we call it as a job here. Okay. Uh, suppose you want to deploy one thing, that is one task, right? Instead of a task, we calling it as a job here. Okay, In Jenkins will call it as a jobs. So you can schedule the jobs also when you want to run. Next year, same time you want to run or every one hour you want to run. Like this, we can schedule the jobs also. Okay, so this is these are the points, guys, why Jenkins means. And the next one is um, installation. How to install the Jenkins? To install the Jenkins, we need the Java. We already installed the Java, right? We already installed the Java. No need to, uh, for the Maven, we already installed. So no need to install again Java, not required. Here you have the installation steps. So prerequisites is Java, Open JDK 11 or 17 should be installed. Okay, so here you have the installation. These are the these steps um, for the windows. Jenkins installation in windows. So how to install the Jenkins in windows? So if you if you are interested, you can go through the video, guys. Okay. So the video is there in the channel. Okay. Let me show you otherwise again. So Jenkins installation 
in Windows by medium tiers. Okay, so this is the video. So 14 minutes video is there. Okay. So here now we installing the Jenkins in uh, AWS. Okay. So in the AWS means Linux. So in the AWS cloud, we launched the Linux instance. No, the same instance only we are going to install. Okay. In Linux, we are installing the Jenkins. Here the Jenkins will run in the browser, guys. Wherever you install, it will run in the browser only. Okay. So this is our instance, right? I'm launching our instance. So here you have the steps, okay? You can follow the steps here. So this is, these are the steps to install in Windows. Okay, you can follow that video also in the channel. And you can install in different ways. Install Jenkins through CLI also. Okay, we can install different ways you can install. And Jenkins installation in EC2, these are the prerequisites. Here the Java version, see now currently Java version, Java 20 something is there. Okay, so in the latest versions, it is not supporting. Jenkins is not supporting in the Java latest versions. If you see, uh, if your Jenkins version is this 1.612, okay, and newer, then you need to install Java 7. If your Jenkins version is 2.54 and a newer version, okay, Java 8 is you need to install. Okay, this software is only to support. And now we have the version 2.357 and above, a newer version we have, okay, Jenkins. Here into it, it supports Java 11 and 17. We have already, I think both we installed, I think, right? 11 and 17. So you can check by using this command, you can check what versions you have, all those things. Let me show you. So I'm updating the mission guys, sudo m update. Next, uh, check whether Java is there or not, give this command. Yeah, we have the 17, okay. Java 17 is there, otherwise you can check Java hyphen version, single hyphen, so 17 version is there, okay. So this is enough. We already installed for the map and no, so same. And the next one is, uh, these are the common, same steps guys, which Java, if you want to see the Java home directory, all the steps I uh, in the map and I explained, no, same only I pasted here. Okay, same those steps only I gave here in this material also. Fine. If you're not having Java, you can install with this command. Next one is second step. Second step is first we need to install um, Jenkins. How to install? Here we have M installed. Wget. Okay, this package is all we need to install here. If you don't have the wget package, install it. Okay, I think we have, right? 
So W get and uh, under the root user. W get is not there here. Yeah, it's there already. Already it is there. And the next one is so we need to download. Okay. So so this is the link, guys. So first we need to download this one. Okay, these these steps will be there in the internet also. I gave the link here one second. So you can copy this link. These links you can get from the internet internet also. Jenkins Red Hat packages. See, this is the official Jenkins documents. So from here you can copy and you can install guys. Okay. So these are the two steps we need to give. See, copy this. So we are creating the uh, Jenkins repository first. Okay. And after that, we are importing the key. We need to import the key. And next, directly we will install. This is the step to install. Okay. So you can copy from here. Otherwise, in the material. If this uh, Here, uh, I also copied from this website. Okay. Copy. And paste it. Okay, so Jenkins repository we created here. Next, we need to import the key also. We need to import the key. So for this, this is the step. The same steps I gave in the material also. Okay, you can follow. See, so this is the one, and this is the second one. No, sorry, here it is. See, this is the imported one. This is the with Jenkins repository. So key also imported. Next, what is the next step? Third and fourth are done. Next one is fifth step. So now we need to install. The same it is there in the website also. So this one. Okay. So yum install Jenkins hyphen by confirmation. See Jenkins installed successfully. Okay. Next. What is the next step? So check the version of the Jenkins. Okay. How to check Jenkins if an iPhone version. Okay. So you will get the version. Now the current version, this is the very latest version. 2.401.1. Very latest. Okay. Next. So Jenkins is ready now. Okay. So now we need to start the service for the Jenkins. First, we'll check whether the Jenkins service is running or not. Okay. Sudo systemctl. This is the command base. Sudo systemctl. Previously, we have one command, service command. Now that command is not working. That command is deprecated. So this is the new command. Systemctl status of Jenkins. Okay. So Jenkins is the service name also. Service name also Jenkins. Okay. I'm checking the status of the Jenkins service. Okay. Now it will show you. See. See. It is inactive. Jenkins service is not running. If the Jenkins service is not running, the Jenkins will not work. Normally see in Windows also, if you install any software, no. Uh, few softwares default the service will run in the background. But for few softwares, we need to start. Right. So here also same. So how to start the same command only instead of status, give the start start. Take some time.
See, it started. Now you can check again the status. See, now it is running. You can see active and it is running. So the Jenkins is running. Come out, Q for quit. So now you can go and start in the browser, guys. Because the Jenkins will work in the browser. Okay, if you install in Windows also, again, Jenkins, you will open in the browser. Okay, browser. Now I'll open here. So where we install the Jenkins in this mission we installed, right? This is the mission, S38 batch instance. So take this mission public IP address, copy, and open a new tab in the browser. Okay, uh, here, the Jenkins by default, it will run in the port number 8080. That is the default port number. Okay, if you want, you can change also later. The default port for the Jenkins is 8080. Okay, see, here, Oh, wait. Control V. Okay. Paste the public IP address colon 8080 like this you need to give. Okay. In the in this mission, we have the Jenkins colon 8080. Jenkins by default, it will run the port number 8080. Now, it will not work. Okay. So, why it will not work means server not found some errors you will get here. Why means we need to open the port also. See, so open, uh, uh, Safari can't open the page it is telling. Why means this port 8080 port is not opened in the AWS. So that's why it is not running. So now we need to open the port. So for this is the instance, right? Select the instance. And here, if you go to the security section, here you have the security groups. This is one service in the AWS. Okay, we'll discuss about this security groups later in deep. Okay, not now. Okay, just time being, I'll give you the little information. Okay, so just what is what? Security group is like a like a watchman, gatekeeper or watchman. Okay, he will allow uh, uh, authorized person. I mean, uh, only see. Uh, if you have, if you show the, normally, if you if you want to enter into the office, they'll ask you the ID card, right? Okay. So once one, if you show the ID card only, they will allow. In that way, here the security group will work. Okay. So who want to enter? Okay. So who want to enter into this instance? Okay. Everything will be controlled by this security group. Okay. Now go to the security group. Automatically, whenever you create the instance in the AWS cloud, one security group also will create here. In the, in the security section, you have security group shortcut SG, SG we call it as. Click on this. So it will, security group will decide who I want to allow, which ports I want to allow into this instance, okay? Here see, edit inbound rules. Click on edit inbound rules. Here the default SSH network 22 port, all these things it is showing. Uh, you can you can add a rule here. Add a rule, custom TCP. You can select the network type and all, custom TCP. And here you can give 8080. Okay. Otherwise, you can give like this. Otherwise, simply you select uh, any traffic or all traffic. Anyone can enter into the my mission. Okay. And here, give internet IP version 4, IPv4. Okay, so save the road. So done, that is also finished. Let's go to the instance. Now, uh, copy this IP address again. Eight zero colon eight zero eight zero. Now see, now it will open. See, see Jenkins opened. Okay. So now it is allowing the port. Okay, port is allowing us to enter into mm -hmm. Jenkins. Okay, 
And here, if you see, uh, the Jenkins is telling unlock. Okay, we need to unlock the Jenkins here. Okay, how to unlock? Here's the Jenkins default, it will go here, varlib Jenkins. Here, in varlib Jenkins, you have one file with the name initial admin password. Inside this file, you have one key. That key, you need to copy and paste it here. Then only the Jenkins will unlock. Okay. So, go to this path. Badlib Jenkins. Jenkins, this is a default path, guys. Jenkins will install in Linux. Okay, this is the default path, Badlib Jenkins. Copy this and go to Jenkins. Change directory or a VA or CAT, anything is fine. Okay, and paste this. Permission denied. So do can okay see this is a file actually if you want you can go step by step also bar lib jenkins inside the jenkins secrets folder will be there inside the secrets folder you have initial admin password okay so this is the jenkins home directory actually here only jenkins will install in linux normally if you install the jenkins in windows now where it will go it will go to c drive programming files right here we'll go to var link. So this is the key you have. Copy this key and paste it here. Click on continue. See, it unlocked now. And here it is asking install suggested plugins or select the plugins to install. Okay, so we don't know. We are new to the Jenkins, right? We don't know which plugins to install, right? So first we will go for the suggested plugins only. Okay, now it, it start installing the suggested plugins in the Jenkins. So it depends upon your internet speed, uh, it will install the plugins. Sometimes it will take half an hour also, sometimes in two minutes also it will finish. In Windows, it will take uh, time actually to five to six minutes. It will take here. See, it depends upon the operating system also, not only internet speed. Okay, so uh, it is it installed all the suggested plugins in the Jenkins. Now it is asking create the username and password. So I'm giving the username here. So username is VM Tunes. The password I'm giving. Password I'm giving something. My password is obviously root one two three only. Okay. So next full name, yeah, same. And email address. Save and continue. Okay. So this is the URL, guys. Okay. With this URL, it will work. But see, the IP address will change every time. The IP address will change, right? So after today's, uh, after completing the class, I'll stop this instance, right? Again, tomorrow we will launch this. We will start. So you'll get a new public IP address. So don't go for this. You just skip this step. Okay, just click on not now. Okay, if you, if you give save and finish now, it will save this IP address. Every time you need to change. It will not work next, okay, next time. So just click on not now, okay? Don't, I'm, I'm, I'm telling to the Jenkins, don't save this, okay? Not now. So now this Jenkins is ready. Start using Jenkins. See, this is the Jenkins dashboard, guys. Welcome to Jenkins. And here it is showing all the options here. So this is the username I created. Okay. And logout, login, notification section. Okay, alerts. All these things will be there. This is the dashboard. Okay, 
Any doubts in the installation? IP address change. So we have Sorry. to repeat the uh, steps all over again. Not getting your voice properly. I'm not audible. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me, Saima. So you said the app IP address will change every time hmm. we log in. Hmm. So we have to repeat the the whole uh the all the steps. No. Every time we log in. Okay. No, just take this IP address. Okay. And then and then enter eight zero eight zero eight. That's it. It will open. Okay. 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 Here, mainly in Jenkins, we use few terminologies. Frequently, we use these terminologies here. What terminologies means? Um, Jenkins master server, okay, Jenkins master server. Jenkins master server means in, in which mission you install the Jenkins, that mission we call it as a Jenkins master server, okay. And next we have nodes, you can call it as a nodes or agents, agents and slaves, okay different names all are same okay so this is a master and this is a client it is like a client and master server i mean uh, server and client architecture it is okay here i am the master you are the slaves i am going to rule you okay see i'll i'll create the jobs and everything and i'll decide on which mission i want to run which mission means which node mission or which slave so here, see, I am the master here, VM Toots. You four are the node missions now. I'll decide that which job on which node mission I want to run. I'll decide that. So today we have five participants, I mean, including me. So I'm the master, you four are the node missions. Okay, it is like a client and server architecture already. Okay, and the next one is here, uh, the jobs will be there. Jobs means just now I told you, no, uh, here in Jenkins, uh, we call it as a jobs. So when ta in tasks only we calling here as a jobs guys. Okay, suppose you want to send an email notification after, uh, after completing the task, you want to send an email notification. Okay, so this is one task, right? So this, this one, we call it as a one job. Suppose you want to deploy an application. So this is one task. This task, we he, we calling it as a jobs in Jenkins. Okay. Here, the basic interview question is, if you don't have any, see the jobs will run in, in two places, guys. The jobs will run in two places. In the Jenkins master server or in, in the node missions. Okay, in these two places only the jobs will run. If there is no nodes, the jobs by default it will run in the Jenkins master server. Jobs by default it will run in the Jenkins master server. Okay. So for the Jenkins master server, we have the configuration page. Okay. So here in Jenkins, we have one configuration page. Whatever we uh, whatever we want to configure, okay, in the master server. We will open the configuration page and we will uh, we will do it. Okay, in that configuration page only, 
we will mention all the things related to the master server. Okay. One, uh, one uh, web page kind of thing will be there. I'll show you all those things. Okay. So same, uh, we have the uh, job configuration page here. Sorry, uh, node configuration page will be there. This is master server configuration page. Here, node configuration page will be there. Node related information we will, uh, we will mention in this node configuration page. In the same way, job configuration page also will be there. Okay. Task related or job related information we will give in the in this configuration page. So these three terminologies we use regularly, guys. Okay. Now first we will see Jenkins master server configuration page. Okay. Let's go. So you can see uh, here you have the option manage Jenkins. This is important. Every time we will go with this only. In the manage Jenkins, you have a lot of options here. Okay. See, so you have the system configuration, security, like this number of sections will be there. You can go in this way. Otherwise, go to the dashboard. Here only have the drop downs. You will get the drop downs here. So from here also, you can go to the manage Jenkins. So different ways. So in the manage Jenkins, I'm going to the system. Under the system configuration section, I'm going to the system. Click on the system. See, this is the Jenkins master server configuration page. Okay, so this is the configuration page. So whatever the values we are passing to these fields, everything in the background, everything it will store in the form of XML tags in the background. Okay. Okay, fine. Now see, this is telling home directory. So Jenkins home directory. Jenkins home directory means where the Jenkins is installed in our Linux machine. So by default, we'll install in the var lib Jenkins. You can go and see also. Change directory to var, lib, and Jenkins. Here you can see, see, a lot of things, all the Jenkins uh, uh, supporting files and everything installed here. And see, previously we unlocked the Jenkins, right? Here in the secrets folder, you have a file with the name initial admin passcode. Okay, so with that, we unlocked the Jenkins. Okay, so this is the Jenkins home directory, guys. And what is the system message here? System message. System message means, uh, suppose if you, uh, here actually in the Jenkins, you have the user part and the administration part also. Admin part will be there and user, user Jenkins also will be there. Administrator means under the administrator, number of users will be there, right? Suppose now the administrator, he is installing one plugin. Okay, he installed one plugin. After installing the plugin, uh, we need to restart the Jenkins actually. That is a very common thing in Jenkins. Once, once the administrator started restarting the Jenkins, whoever the users under that admin, whatever the users under that admin, okay, for them, the Jenkins will not work properly. So immediately what they will do, they will escalate the mails to the higher authorities. My Jenkins is not working. So instead of that, we need to send a, administrator need to send a, a message to the users under his account. How? He can pass a system message or a friendly message he can pass here. So please wait uh, for few minutes. Any, any message, paragraph also you can. So this message, it will, it will print on the banner of every user, every Jenkins user. We'll print on the banner here. Okay. So by reading this message, they will understand. Oh, admin is doing something. We'll wait for a few minutes. Okay. So this is the use of system message. 
Next field is off executors. Off executors means here by default two, you can use 200 also. How many jobs or how many tasks you want to run on the Jenkins master server? Okay, so, so you can increase, say I'm giving uh, here, here the drop downs, so you can increase four, five, how many you want to get. Okay, capacity, how many jobs you want to run in the Jenkins master server? Labels, we have a separate concept. Okay, we'll discuss this later. Next one is usage. Here, the default option, use this node as much as possible. See what I told here, if there is if there is no nodes, the jobs will run by default in the Jenkins master, right? So now here, it is telling, see, if, you are, if there is no nodes, the job will run in the master default. So we are treating the master as a master also a node. Master also, we are treating it as a node. Okay, if there is no node, the jobs will run in the master, right? So master also we are treating as a node. So what node it is? We have another name also for this. Built-in node. Building node. Okay, Jenkins master server or built-in node? Both are same. Building node, default. I mean, uh, uh, no, we didn't create the nodes, okay? So this node you will get default. Okay, there is a master. So master is also acting as a node here. That is the meaning. And see, here we are going with the same default option only. Use this node as much as possible. This is the Jenkins master server, right? So this also we are treating as a node only and use as much as possible. Okay. And the next one is quite period. Quite. Quite period means, see here they're giving the five. Five means five seconds. So for the five seconds, it will be quiet. Let me give you a real time scenario for this field. Suppose you are, uh, you are configuring one job, okay? In that job you mentioned, you want to deploy the application in web, web server, okay? So you want to deploy, that is the task, that is the job, right? okay? You want to run, sorry, you want to deploy the application in the web server. Okay, so to run the web server, okay, so normally if you start the web server, no, immediately it will not run. It will take five seconds or 10 seconds or one minute or, or 10 minutes like that it will take. Okay, before running the web server, if you execute the job, no, what will happen? The job will fail because the web server is not ready. Right? Suppose assume that the web server is taking time for 10 minutes. 10 minutes it is taking time to run, up and run. If you give here quite period, uh, five minutes, no? Five minutes if you give here, what will happen? The job will fail. Once you execute the job, what it will do, no? It will hold the job for five minutes. Then Jenkins will hold the job for the five minutes because you give the five minutes here, no? Five minutes or seconds, whatever. Okay, so the, if you execute the job also, the Jenkins will hold the job for the five minutes. And after that, it will release. But the application server, it will run after 10 minutes. So the job will fail. It will release. Okay, Jenkins will release the job, but the job will fail. So then how much time you need to give here? 11 minutes, more than 10 you need to give. So the application server will ready after 10 minutes. But you are executing the job 5 minutes on after 5 minutes. On. Okay. So you need to give 11 or 12 or 15 minutes you need to give. Then once you execute, okay, it will hold for 11 minutes. And after that, the Jenkins will release the job. And then the job also will success. Five minutes in that job we mentioned, no, deploy the application in the web server. So the web server is also ready. Uh, the job will deploy the application inside the web server. Okay, so this is a quiet period, guys. You can give in, in hour, hours also you can give. Uh, suppose you want to give one hour, means you have to convert 60 into 60, how many seconds you will get? That seconds in that number you need to mention. 
Okay. So this is what the quiet period is. Once you execute also, the Jenkins will hold the job. Okay. And next one is SEM checkout retry count. What is this SEM checkout retry count? Source, SEM means what? Source code management. In the source code management, what tool we covered? The Git. Okay. We covered the Git tool here. Okay. SEM checkout retry count means here, the Jenkins will treat Git and GitHub both are same. We will not integrate the Git with the Jenkins. That is not possible. We will integrate GitHub with the Jenkins. In, in Git also, what you are doing? After performing all the operations in the Git local repository, end of the day, we are connecting to the GitHub and we are pushing everything to the GitHub, right? So everyone will connect to the GitHub only, not with the Git, yes, remember. Here Jenkins also treating Git and GitHub both are same. Okay, ultimate code, everything will be there in the GitHub. So here the SEM means the GitHub. If you want to work in the Jenkins, you need a data, right? You need a code to start your work in the Jenkins. So what we will do here, we will integrate the GitHub with the Jenkins. Once we integrate the GitHub with the Jenkins, we'll start executing the job. Okay, once you execute the jobs, no, what we'll do? The Jenkins will interact with the GitHub. So GitHub is also in the, running in the browser. Jenkins is also running in the browser. Both are uh, in the internet. If Jenkins want to enter into the GitHub website, it need a credentials, right? Credentials and all will give. With the credentials, it will enter and it will collect this data from the GitHub. Okay, sometimes when Jenkins is connecting with the GitHub, some issues you will get in the uh, 404 error, page not found error. If the Jenkins is not able to connect properly with the GitHub, no? So you will get some errors and it will stop. Okay, if you give a value here, suppose SEM checkout retry count, if you give a three like this, three times it will retry connecting to the GitHub. If you're not giving anything, no, it will not retry again and again. So if you give three means, three times it will retry. If it is not connecting, if Jenkins is not connecting with the GitHub, okay, if any, some network issue, something has happened, okay, if it is not connecting, no, again, it will try. Again, again, like this, three times it will try. This is what the check, check, CM checkout retry count. Checkout meaning is what? Coming out. Coming out retry count. Okay, so these are the fields we have in the Jenkins master server. Okay, so this is the configuration field. So we're done, we, uh, uh, we configured the Jenkins master server. Okay, and the next one is, next we need to create the job. Okay, and next we need to create the nodes. All these things we need to do. Okay, so that we will see in tomorrow's session. So, so far, if you have any doubts, you can ask. So install and install Jenkins and get ready, guys. Okay, we'll continue tomorrow. And this is the new link, Zoom meeting link. Okay, same link only every day. Okay, from today onwards. Sure. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.